There's lots and lots to think about. There's lots and lots to do. Let's make some Gloom Spike Gets lists, or at least start thinking about what our Gloom what Gloom Spike Gets lists will look like. Thank you to all my patrons. Thank you, Baron of Dice, for supporting the channel. Thank you, Iberian, for for providing some pretty sick art. Don't forget, patrons. You guys hit me up and forth. We'll write lists, deploy in TTS, all that good stuff. <sighs> you can fight manifestations. You know, I know, you can fight them, but it's going to feel bad. It's going to feel really bad. They all have HP now. Well, it's like, for example, can you play the game without cavalry? Can you play the game without monsters? Can you play the game without priests? Right? Like, can you play the game without, like, foot heroes? Like, yes. Can you play the game without banish banishments? No. <laughs> like, no, you can't. Okay. So, the thing with Gloom Spike Gets um, right now that I think is worth talking about is, like, the huge brick of squig herd is no longer viable. Right? The huge brick of squigs is no longer viable. It's it's just not going to work. You can't flood the board with 72 squigs anymore. It just doesn't work. Um, bounders are still good. And the hero that goes with Bounders is also good. This guy right here. Loon Boss on Mangler Squig. You can if you're compensated. What do you mean? We're still talking about endless spells here? Or manifestations. So this, like, as a squad, is still like this is a this is a viable way to play. Uh, squigs bounders are still good. We we did some uh, damage analyses, and they and they still slap even if they fall over themselves. In TTS, these guys say hoppers, but they look like bounders. So this as a squad, this little guy here, when um, he fights with the bounders, he gives them plus one. He gives them plus one uh, to hit, which is actually pretty good and pretty relevant. Plus one to hit. I think that most of the bounders still hit on fours, so now you're hitting on threes. So this little squad is actually a decent squad at trying to take objectives from your opponent. Uh, Fellwater Trogoths, they lost their minus one to hit aura. So uh, now all they have is their is their little uh, vomit, right? And the vomit uh, still you know gives a minus one to save, and they can't buff their save. So in effect, what it's giving is uh, plus one rend to whatever is going to fight into the unit that you spat on. So like plus one rend to rock guts. There's not a lot of save stacking in this game at all anymore. Like, almost none. Like, lots of armies are going to have no ways of giving plus one save besides all-out defense. So, the Fellwater, I think, is actually super weak now. The Fellwater has to be way cheaper in points than the Rock Guts. The Fellwaters will deal more damage than the Rock Guts will, but the Rock Guts are just so much tankier. They have an additional plus one to save, and they have a five upward. So, I'm kind of thinking at this point that Fellwaters are never going to be the choice. I'm kind of thinking that Fellwaters are never going to be the choice. They are just way squishier. And what you want from trolls is like anvils. So I feel like the rockets are in and the Fellwaters are out. Um, yeah, like if you get to be crazy good at something else and don't have magic, I think it's viable. But they have to be willing to give it to a factions. Well, like... I don't like I don't know like what it looks like if you if you're constantly fighting manifestations. Don't forget that in your like let's say that you're the player who doesn't have manifestations, you have to charge into the manifestations and like pile into them and fight them. And if you kill them, well your opponent's going to re-summon them on their turn. And it's going to be another thing in the way, right? Like I don't know. We'll see. Like I don't know how it'll feel, but we shall see. Um the Daghold Trog boss uh, lost the ability to do any kind of wade and smash on his war scroll, but the Dankhold Trog boss, his monstrous action is wade and smash. Wade and smash, you get to move six inches, not a d6. You get to move six inches and then smash. So he's got that extra movement capability, so he's actually really scary. So I think that, like, the idea of having, like, uh, bricks of six rock guts is still super super good and viable 
So if I was going to put down... If I was going to start a Getz army right now, I think, for trolls anyway, I think I would start them with uh, two units of rock guts. Just like I would before. And then also a dank hold. Right? Let's, uh, where's my phone? We gotta get out some points here. So we're gonna make a we're gonna make a list that's roughly 1,600 points. The, the closer to 1,600 we get, the better. If we spill over to 1,700, that's gonna be okay. But we're trying because all the points are being adjusted upwards, and we're gonna try to be cognizant of like what heroes we have that are gonna unlock what other what other things in our list. Okay. Um, Oh, do I guess I don't have a trug model. I need some better gets stuff. I don't have a trug. So we're just going to use this hag to represent our trug. I think trug is is good. Uh, the fact that he gives his buff to rockets or to trolls wholly within 12 now, I think is pretty cool. So he's he's more of he's a buff piece as well as like a big smashy piece. That was his problem before in third, is if you didn't play him in the Trog herd, he wasn't really giving much to the faction. He was just kind of like, like he was kind of hard pressed for a role. It's like he was okay, but he was kind of slow. He hit pretty hard, but didn't throw a lot of dice. So he was kind of swinging and inconsistent. But in this next edition, the fact that he buffs people around him is going to be good. I thought the gets points were going down. The BR reports I've seen had been around. Oh, really? Interesting. Well, when you saw the, um, the the gets points, or when you saw these battle reports, were they playing squigs or trolls? Because squig points are going down. Yeah, exactly. So squig, so like squig herd, for example, are a half they were were squig squig herd, I believe. I have the app open in front of me here, so I might as well actually look at it. Squig herd before were I want to say 140 points. Yeah, they were 140 points. They're going to have to go down to at least 100. Probably less, right? They lost half of their wounds. They can no longer run in charge, really. Um, they need, like, a lot of help to run in charge. They, um, yeah, like, everything in, like, the Squig faction took a hit. So I think that the points are all going to go down, and then for me, squigs are going to be viable or not based on their point cost. Like, can you have enough squigs on the table that it makes it viable? Right? Like, hop and I haven't actually seen the war scroll for hoppers yet. Bounders look good. Herd also looks good if they're pointed correctly. Right? So I could see 2300, 2400 points in current points for squigs being uh, legit. Was there anything in particular in the squig list or the battle report that you saw for fourth that looked like it was good or interesting? Like any units that kind of shone through or any any unit in any role that looked good? Because, um, yeah, that's basically what that's going to come down to, I think. Um, Web Spinner Shaman... I'm not going to spend a million years looking for a madcap sh or um we're just going to call this madcap shaman a fungoid cave shaman. It was Gits versus Seraphon. Yeah. That sounds that sounds appropriate. So here's kind of what I'm thinking for for troll lists, right? For a troll list, like if I was going to start fourth and play a troll list, this is what I would play. I would play sort of two bricks of like one with Trug and a and a Fungoid Cave Shaman, and over here another a Daghold tr uh, Trogoth, not Trog Boss, and a Fungoid Cave Shaman. This is what I would do, and then for the did I close it all down? I hope not. I did. Ugh. I was tempted of, of just kind of taking today off and just chilling. But I can't. I have to keep thinking and talking. Um, yeah, so I take Loon Touched on one of the uh, the shamans. Right, just give him plus one to cast. And then I'm going to take... 
I don't even know. There's no good artifacts of power that I want to take. The thing with the gets right now is that I, I don't really want to take a trog boss. Right? I don't want to take a trog boss because I feel like trog is just going to be better. Uh, the, the trog boss lost weight in smash and his new monstrous action is like... Um... I can't remember. It was something that he had before, but I didn't feel like it was super strong. So... Uh... I don't really know what... I, like, to me, right now, the artifacts of power, none of them look good because they all... They all look like they want to go on either, like... A trog boss or on a mangler squig, loon boss on mangler squig, right? So it's like subtract one from all attacks that target the hero. That's good on something big and meaty. Back sever blade doesn't look good at all, and leering get shield again looks like it goes on something that's big and meaty. That's also good. Trug can't take it. I don't want to take a trog boss. I don't want to take a loon boss on mangler squig. Maybe I will depending on the points, right? Maybe he'll be costed cheaply enough that I'll be like, okay, like. Even if he's, even if he sort of dies, like, you know, even if the retreat isn't super great or whatever, you know, like maybe I'll still want to take him and he'll just be annoying. Or maybe a Colossal Squig will be pointed cheaply enough and I can take the one where if you roll ones to hit him that he bounces mortal wounds back. Like, those all seem fine and dandy, but for trolls right now, like, there's no artifact power that I want to take. So, like, who cares? Anyway, if you take two bricks like this, right, so you have these two little castles... And then, oh, do I just not have, uh, does anybody have good TTS gets models? I feel like this is just like not, it's not very good. I'm missing a few important things. But, well, how about we just call these Snarl Fang Riders instead of Rippas? Just for our, just for our purposes. These, um, Snarl Fang Riders are, are really cool right now because they get a free redeploy. And that's cool. Anyway, this is 1,620 points of Gloom Spike gets. I feel like something like this would actually be pretty good, right? I think that with trolls this season, you're definitely going to need two flankers, right? Because you're going to be looking to capture, um, like, uh, take the flanks or deny take the flanks. So a free redeploy on the Snarl Fang is going to be actually pretty good at that, right? Like, you can, you can sort of free redeploy into... Uh, onto your opponent's side of the table and create a screen, right? That's really strong. Um, take what's theirs, or take their land, or whatever it's called, where you have to be within three of a terrain piece outside of enemy territory. Snarlfang Riders are going to be good at doing that, too, right? Just, like, redeploying within range. The only problem with Snarlfang Riders is that you can only use one of the free redeploys per turn, so if you do bring two of them, you're not, you know, getting the total value. But we'll, we'll see based on points, but I think that if this is the little brick that, that you want to take, uh, the next thing that you need are, are two fast flankers. So those could be Boingra Bounders, those could be Spider Riders, those could be uh, Squigs, like maybe just, maybe Herd are actually going to be pretty decent at this, right? They're not going to be good at taking objectives at all. Or maybe instead it's like you take a really cheap flank on one side, like maybe you take Spider Riders or Herd on one side, and then you take like this, like a squad of Boingra Bounders, over here or maybe it's hoppers because i haven't seen them yet but points are going to dictate this but if you wanted to take a brick something like this in the middle i don't think that the points of these things is going to change too significantly right but if you wanted to do like a rock gut uh castle on two fronts i think this is how you do it what do you guys think i'm thinking if you want to take two big trolls it's trug and it's the dank hold right trug is obviously super great at, at buffing his friends and the dank hold has wade and smash and wade and smash is such a good ability and then you take the two little cheapest wizards that you can find, you give one plus one to cast, and then all that you are missing with your points is flanks. Right? To me, this kind of this kind of a list to me seems pretty self-evident. It seems like it it seems like this is the way that you would play um, like this this style of, of trolls, right? By the way, how are my levels? Is my music too loud or anything? Do I sound okay? I hope I sound okay. I hope everything's sounding good. Thanks for the first first time chat, pesky zest. Makes sense. I wonder which hero will unlock the wolves and their regiment. Right, so that was going to be my next sort of question. I think that if you if you take Trug, Trug's going to be a war master and he has to be your general. I think he's going to unlock dank holds and I think he's going to unlock rock guts. And so the regiment, so like, sorry, 
Is there four units total in a regiment and five in the general's regiment? Or is it three total and four for the general? I can't remember. Does the general's regiment have five units in it, including himself? Or is it four? Including himself. Three total, four in general. So it's so four total in the general's regiment. General four other units. X plus four. So it's jet so in the general's regiment there's five units. And in the non-general's regiments, there's four units. Five in the general's regiment. Okay. Four, right. Awesome, thank you. So if you take Trug, Trug's Trug is a war master, right? So it's Trug and then one, two, three, four. Well, probably something like this. Maybe Trug won't unlock these little guys. Um, and then, yeah, you're probably looking at three drops. And hopefully you can do whatever your flankers are. You can do something like this. Right? Hopefully you can do something like this. Or if it was going to be this, it would be something like you would take him and, and his dudes or something. Right? Like the regiments would look something like this. For honor guard, you're gonna you're gonna take because your trug is your honor guard, you're gonna take a unit of rock guts and you're gonna probably make them bodyguard if you wanted to like be super defensive. And if you didn't want to be super defensive, you could pick either one of your units of rock guts and give them like that plus one to hit, plus one to wound against an enemy or against uh, enemies in your general's regiment. But I feel like bodyguard is might be the best one the more and more that I think about it, because um, it's like a counter to the other one. So, for example, if my opponent is like, oh, I have plus one to hit and plus one to wound against units in my enemies. Oh, no, I just closed steam. <laughs> uh, um, then I feel like that's like it's a counter, right? Regiment picture in Age of Sigmar. Okay, what a guy. Leave Discord. Right, okay. Each resident has one hero and zero to three non-hero units. Zero to four if heroes a general. Some heroes units allowed allow the addition of extra heroes to the regiment. Right. So I think it's gonna be like, yeah. If you're looking for TTS models. Uthuan? Oh yeah. I'll have to check that out after I've done this. Because um, I get distracted so easily. So, like, what's our prediction for what hero? You know what? Hold on one sec. Like, subscribe, wah! 